Hey guys, this is Tomek from storagefreak.net. In my last video, I showed you how you could create Windows Virtual Machine in GCP under 5 minutes. If you haven't seen the video, the link should be somewhere on the screen right now. In this tutorial, I will fast forward through the process of creating the new virtual machine and connecting to it. There is a timer on the screen, so you can see how long it took me to complete the action. If you want to watch the process in the normal pace, just check out the video I mentioned previously. I'm going to provision the Windows Virtual Machine using Compute Engine. Once I'm connected, we will explore what kind of things we can change while the machine is running, so non-disruptively to the system, and when we have to stop the virtual machine to edit some additional settings. For example, if we want to add CPU or RAM, we will have to stop it, but if we want to add or attach a new storage, we can do it non-disruptively. Don't be surprised if the interface is a little bit different in the future. Google Cloud Platform is a living product and Google tends to update the layout quite often, but the overall functions should be very similar. Alright, once the machine is ready, Let's provide the username and password we generated and let's log in. This image has a couple of things in the auto start. That's why, for example, server manager will boot up automatically, as well as a small program called BG Info that will place very useful information about the host on the desktop wallpaper. We can see it right now. The whole process took me out 5 minutes. Now let me try to see how much storage I've got available and maybe try to allocate another disk. There's only a single partition with 50 gigabytes in size. Let's navigate to the disk management. And nothing else is available for me. Let me try to allocate new disk. To do so, I will minimize the session and go back to the console. To view and edit details of your virtual machine, click on its host name and then use the edit button. Pay attention that not everything can be changed. As a matter of fact, most of the things you have to stop your instance to edit. However, there are a couple of things you can do. You can change the firewall settings. You can decide what's going on with the boot disk once you delete the virtual machine. For example, you can keep it or you can allocate additional disk. Let's do it now. At this point we can edit some settings of our new disk. Let's give it more meaningful name. It's always a good idea, especially when you have many disks available. Um, then we can choose between standard and SSD disk. We can set up some snapshot schedule, we can define the size. Size is also related to the performance. But for now, let's accept all the default settings and click Done. Once we are ready and the machine is edited, we can click Save to apply the changes. It might take a couple of seconds before the changes are saved. Now on the Instance Details page, we should be able to see the changes and notice there is our test Windows disk available for us. Let's go back to our Windows instance and see if the OS recognized the new disk. It did. 500 gigabyte disk is available. Now what we have to do is to initialize the disk because this is not yet a partition. It doesn't have any file system ready for us. So in the disk management, let's initialize the disk, accept it the default settings. Once this is ready, the next step would be to create the volume. Volume is a partition with the file system. So, in our case, I will accept the biggest possible size and all the default settings and after a couple of clicks, our new volume is ready. At this point, the new partition should be ready for us and we should be able to place some folders and files within it. Let's try to create an example folder. I will call it, I don't know, this is, this is test folder. Now, that was creative, wasn't it? But at least we know we've got read-write permissions on the disk. But wait a minute, why don't we see our new volume on the desktop information? That's because the program that is placing this information works only during the startup, so the information we see right now is just a wallpaper, it will not update automatically. 
But anyways, let's try to do something more interesting. Notice our CPU information and available RAM. And let's try to increase it. To do so, we have to shut down the machine. So we have to remember this is disruptive operation to your environment. Now we can shut it down from GCP console or directly from the OS. Since I'm working with the server edition, I have to put the reason why I'm shutting down the machine. Alright, once this is completed, it will take some time before the GCP console realizes that the machine is shutting down. Let's speed up the video here for a second. Notice the timer on the screen to verify how long it actually took before the machine was shut down completely. Interesting that it takes more time to shut down than to start up, but that's how it is. After around two and a half minutes, the machine is finally stopped. Now we can enter the details to edit some of the additional options. Notice that on this page, it still says the machine is running. Let's try to refresh this page. And just after a few seconds, we notice the machine is at full stop. So right now we can go and edit it to change our CPU and memory settings. Now we do have two options. We can either go for the predefined machine type or go for the custom one, adjust the number of CPU cores and the size of the memory to our needs. Notice that the number of available memory is somehow related with the number of CPU you have chosen. In a custom mode you can be very specific of what you want. In my case, I will use one of the predefined uh, machine type to double the memory and CPU power of what I have already. Notice that at this point it doesn't display the estimated cost of your machine. So before you go crazy with the numbers, make sure to use GCP pricing calculator to understand your cost. I will put the link to GCP pricing calculator in the description of this video. Once the changes are saved, we will be ready to start the machine again. So to start the machine, just simply click start and accept the message that the credits will be used once the machine is running. The startup of the machine should be fairly quick and we just added more CPU and memory to the machine, which will help. So let me go back to list of all my VMs and notice that the Windows 1 is already running. Notice the external IP address. It didn't change, but there was a chance that the new IP address could have been assigned to the machine during the startup process. As I mentioned previously, if you want to make sure the IP is always the same, you have to put reservation on it. Anyways, let's use the external IP and remote desktop connection to connect back to our virtual machine. As you probably noticed, I haven't changed the randomly generated password to my account. So let's hope I still do have it in my clipboard. Ok, I do. Accepting the certificate and the connection is in progress. Since we just booted up the machine, it will again start up with the server manager and run the BG info program that will update our background with the current server information. So let's give it another second or two. Let's close the server manager because there is nothing I want to change here. And notice the information in the background is also updated together with our extra volume and also more memory and CPU information available for us. However, I don't think it displays number of CPU cores here. It doesn't matter. Let's check it in the same place we did previously. Let me open task manager and within it let's go to the performance tab. We should see here that our changes are applied. And you can notice that the CPU have four virtual processors right now and also the memory increased from 7.5 to 15 gigabytes. Ok, let me also validate if our external storage we set up before the reboot is still available for us. In the PC we still see the new volume available and inside there is a folder we just created before the reboot. Perfect. I will now disconnect from the session. In this way the machine will still run in the background, for example if it's running any production workload. Since I don't need this machine anymore, 
let me go ahead and delete it this way it will stop consuming my credits this will take some time so I will increase the speed of the video again but stay with me there is one important thing I want to show you spoiler alert what happened to our additional disk we created previously after a few minutes the machine should be removed completely and it's done now let's navigate to the disk section and surprise surprise our test windows disk is there why is that so well because during creation we just attached it to our virtual machine it wasn't part of it so right now we can attach it to another virtual machine or even if that was a boot disk we could potentially use it to create a new virtual machine in our case I will go ahead and remove it because I don't need it anymore if I forgot to remove it I would be billed for my credits for the storage used it's not that much and you can verify the price in the price calculator link in the description of the video but you know it's just a waste of money to keep something you don't need and you will not need it in the future so to keep it tidy I just removed that okay nice that's all I wanted to show you today thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel to see more tutorials leave a comment if you've got any remarks or questions and see you in the next video bye